You all know it, yes, I have been kimono shopping again. <laughs> In case you're here for the first time, my name is Billy Matsunaga and I'm a fully trained and certified kimono teacher and stylist. I wear kimono mostly every day. Of course, not seven days a week, that would be just awesome, <laughs> but yeah mostly every day so i've got a bunch of kimono but they turn out to never be enough so i shop a lot especially when i hear that there is an event where you can get old kimono super cheap then you can bet i am there in november we had an event in kumamoto that was run by a store called kokichi Kokichi is a second-hand kimono store in Kumamoto and I think they also have an online store and they also ship worldwide, at least they did until a few months ago. I don't know if they still do it, but I will link them down below. No, this video is not sponsored, but I ask you if you want to see a haul from the things I bought on Instagram and I think it was 98% yes I want to see that so here is your haul. Still I want to talk about that event a little. Um, it is what would you call it a yearly second-hand kimono sale probably run by that store Kokichi. They also had someone there who actually is a professional kimono cleaner. I am planning a small cooperation with him so look forward to that. They also had a corner with, I would say, normal secondhand kimono. They really had a lot and they were from 20 to $50. So it's not too expensive, but not too cheap, I would say. They also had a corner with more formal kimono. I think they were a little more on the pricey side, but I didn't really check because I have enough formal kimono and when I buy a new kimono, it's casual because I wear them every day. That's what I need. And the last corner, the reason why I went there was that they pile up a ton of kimono, secondhand antique kimono, everything just in one pile and you get a bag and then you can stuff as much kimono into the bag as you can and one bag was less than thousand yen i think i paid nine dollar or nine euro for one bag and i went out with three <laughs> so i have here my went right into sewing stash and i have here my already revel stash so I probably go through sewing stash, wearable stash, sewing stash, wearable stash. So this video will not be too boring. Let's start probably with the sewing stash. The first item I got was this um, Hitoe kimono, which is an unlined kimono. You can see inside there is no lining. It is a silk. It is um, a silk type that is called a chiriman. I found the color super cool. I just liked it very much, but it is antique. You can tell from the colors and from how it is made that it's pretty old. 20s, 30s is something that would, I would say, probably not earlier because the silk would have been more damaged if it would be older anyway i have i have still not decided what i should make out of it it is way too small so i definitely couldn't wear it even when i leave out the ohashuri and yes i am doing this as well mostly people just don't notice um it it just would be too small for me it's actually super nice nagajuban size so this would be a nice undergarment 
problem is chili, me chili men is very heavy you usually wouldn't use that for an undergarment i thought to bring this to my sewing class and ask my teacher what she, she thinks about it um, worst case it would be a haori or another kimono coat next up in my wearable stash is this hakata ori obi i already talked about what hakata ori is in a previous video it is made in a town that is called Fukuoka that is also on the island Kyushu where I am living. I thought orange and white is pretty cool. It is unfortunately heavily stained but it is still not sewn so I still can probably sew this so I could actually wear it without caring about the stains. Hakata Obi are never wrong when you find Hakata Obi very cheap somewhere, get one. Next up from my sewing stash is, and I don't know why I love this kimono so much, but I just loved it so much. So I put it right into my bag. The color, I hope you can see this color. Um, in Japanese, you would say it is kitsune iro, which means fox color. Um, you should say probably fox red, but I always have the feeling that foxes in Japan are a little more on the brownish yellowish side than European foxes because I think they really look more orange. It is an Avaisa kimono with the white lining. The white lining is heavily damaged. You can already rip it off actually. So I would have to retailer it anyway. It hasn't my size at all as well. So for me it has also this autumnish vibes so i really thought this would be nice for howdy in autumn what do you think i'm pretty thrilled about this idea and um, the pattern is also very easy so i will be able to add for example more fabric onto the sleeves so i can make the yuki a little longer so it would fit my kimono and this is just awesome Next up on my wearable stash is this gorgeous howdy. I was talking so much about howdy already, so I thought I'd just gonna bring one out. Um, I loved the dots on it. It is so cute. I think this one is one after the war, probably 70s, 80s, because that was when short howdy were really in style. Before that, it was very long howdy, and right now it's pretty long howdy again. And at that time, short howdy were the real trend. What I really, really liked about this howdy is that it has a name stitched or embroidered, I wouldn't say that it is embroidered, on it, and it says Hisako. So, someone, a lady who is called Hisako, owned this, and I found a few things with this and it were in total what I found were three names so I'm pretty sure this probably were three sisters and I embroidered their name onto their clothes so they can um, distinguish which is whose and I found this very cute and nice. Next up is another thing from my wearable stash because my wearable stash is apparently a little bigger than my sewing stash. Let's stay with kimono coats because I got this nice raincoat. Raincoats are super long coats you wear over your kimono and this is supposed to protect your kimono from getting wet, of course. I found an old package of tissues in one of the pockets and it was from a bank that already changed their name. So I can tell this one is also from the 70s or 80s, but it's not made in the 90s because that's when the bank changed their name. So it has to be something before that and it, it looks a little 80s, not 90s, sorry, it looks a little 80s to me. Um, but it also could be 70s. Okay, next up is something from my sewing stash. I will go with one of my favorites I have purchased and I really hope the camera can catch it. 
I bought, oh yeah, you can see it. Oh my God, it is so beautiful. <laughs> it is so gorgeous. I hope you can see the color that is changing because the vertical and the horizontal threads are different colored. So it looks like this. This one is by the way also real silk and it is antique, which you can tell by the red lining. Look at this gorgeous red lining. Isn't this amazing? This one has a size, so I actually could have worn it, but I'm trying my best to show you. Can you see this wrinkly part here? Um, in Japanese, you would say tsureai ga warui. So it, the lining and the front fabric doesn't really match in length. You can see it especially on um, the back where you can see that the stitching is already visible, which means that probably this colored lining shrank because this kimono became wet somewhere and the front didn't shrink that much so it became like wonky wobbly <laughs> something like it is right now if this would be the stamai the part you wear under the front then it would be hidden so i wouldn't really care but this one is actually ubamae and this would be visible and that is why you should Never, never try to wash your kimono by yourself because you will kill them. And that is why this kimono now is in my sewing stash. When you wash your kimono, do dry cleaning. I know I still owe you the video for how to clean kimono, but do not put it in water and wash it because this is something that happens. I will retailor it and make it more fitable to my size. It is gonna be a kimono again. Next, we are talking about antique wearable stash antique. Yay! I found this antique Nagoya Obi. Woo! <laughs> Nagoya Obi again is one of those Obi that are already folded into half where, where you wrap it around your waist and the otaiko part is in full width. That is what you call a Nagoya Obi. And what I like most of it, it's like a real old one. When you turn, you can see on the back, they used a different fabric um, for making this Obi, which is something they actually did when they made things on their own at home. So this is also a hand sewn. And this also shows me that this Obi must be super old and definitely pre-war because people actually stopped doing that after the war. Next, wearable stash. Again, an obi. It is a Nagoya obi that is just half tailored. <laughs> you can still, still see the, um, the thread on the back <laughs> because they didn't use a proper um, back lining for this. It has absolutely no stains. It is real silk and that it is not really nicely tailored is something I don't really care about. And I think it looks really nice. What do you think about this? For the next item, let's stay at uh, the wearable stash. I bought this uh, gorgeous off-white pinkish kimono for you guessed it right, a spring, because I don't have a lot of spring kimono. It has this cute pink lining. It is heavily stained, but I think you can tell when you see it from far away. So I don't really care and I'm going to wear it as it is. When you have stains somewhere on your kimono, always think about, is it still wearable? Do you really want to take the risk to damage it heavily? 
In this case, I decided not to try anything, although it was less than a dollar, because I like it, ooh, <laughs> because I like it, and because I want to wear it and it has my size. There was this kimono in the normal corner, not the big stash where everybody was ripping and searching for things desperately. <laughs> there was this nice pink kimono. <laughs> I don't know why I love this kimono so much, but it is gorgeous. This one is also real silk. Um, it has a pattern on it. It is not hand painted, I think. And it's also not too old, I think. And this kimono was $50. It is gorgeous. I love all the flowers on it. I love the colors. I love this not too pinkish pink. I love this yellowish green. The yellow, it is just a perfect kimono. And I think it was definitely worth buying it. Another thing I found in the normal corner was this Nagoya Obi with Sakuro on it. I'm really sorry, I don't know how to say in English, so I'll put it here or here. In Japanese, it's called Sakuro. And I always wanted to have a Sakuro Obi. I like the color because it's kind of different. It's pink and beige, and I found it looked super nice with the kimono. I have just showed you so I couldn't get around to get this and this one was uh, $30 I think 30 euros 30 dollars and last but least is my favorite item it is a summer kimono with those gorgeous colors it is definitely from the 1920s it is way too short for me way too short again I couldn't even wear this even if I would leave out the ohashori. So I actually thought to make an obi out of this. And when I had it at home and looked at it, it has like zero stains. It has a few stains, but for me that's still zero. It, it is in perfect condition and even the seams don't rip off. It has a few holes here and there. So I will probably keep this in my treasure stash for a while and think what I would make with it. I think an obi is actually a good idea to have it living on and someone is actually wearing it instead of having it lying around somewhere no one actually looks at it anymore. Um, so please don't be angry with me if I finally or eventually do decide to make an obi out of it. Oh, I forgot one item because I'm wearing it. I also got this kimono. Um, that is very precious to me too. It's still a little too small for me. Today I wore it with my mompe that I have made earlier on this channel. If you like this style, make sure to check out my video how to make a mompe or a so-called yamabakama on this channel. So that was it. Another haul on my channel i never thought that i would be able to make so many hauls on my channel again all of those items that i pulled out of the stash cost me less than a dollar or less than a euro which is amazing you can still retailer it you can mend it you can still wear it i love that so much i hope this video shows you that you shouldn't care too much about stains and sometimes you also shouldn't care too much about Though this kimono is so precious, so I don't want to cut it off. Sometimes you can retailer it into something that you can actually wear and that still looks nice. And this is actually also the spirit of kimono and of the Japanese culture. I hope you liked this video. If you did, leave me a comment down below or of course a thumb up if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet. Feel free to subscribe. I would be very happy to see you again on my channel. Thank you for your support. Thanks for watching. And I'll talk to you in my next video. Bye!